on buttered toast, biting tips and kidlit ooze, pointy hats and bubbling brews. Brain burps, brain burps, brain burps about books. Brain burps, brain burps, brain burps about books. The podcast. Brain burps about books. Podcast episode number one hundred and fifty-five. Welcome, <laughs> welcome, Betsy Bird, for the Hello. Halloween edition of Brain Burps About Books. I got to adjust my tiara. <laughs> my 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 devil horns are getting in the way. For people who are just listening to this, we are on Google Hangouts, and it's very scary because we are dressed up for Halloween in the slightest way possible. You're probably in the laziest way. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah, right. I put on a black shirt. Right, me too. I, I'm like looking at my closet going, what can I wear that's Halloween? I'll wear black. <laughs> and these are tights. Right. So and you have, they're not meant to go around your neck. No, no, but, but, no you have, right, right. You have, yeah. she has uh, orange and black tights on her neck, <laughs> right? That, that she looked like she was just choking herself. And I have the Google Hangout effects, which means that I have horns and a tiara floating above my head, and I'm, I look very scary. Plus, very plus I don't have any makeup on, which is even scarier, because <laughs> Betsy made me do this at 9 o'clock at night, and there was no way I was... I'm sorry, man. <laughs> no one's done me to do it. She has no idea the day I had, so it's just Aww. lucky I even showed up. All right, now I had to grab her, because we are doing a spooktacular... I did, I said that. A spectacular yeah. event today. Scary, scary books. Let's go, Betsy. Let's hear them. All right. Scary books. I got, a, I got a whole pile of them here for you. So, you know, and I figured if we're going to talk about scary, so I'm going to talk about scary children's books and one scary YA book, okay. which is a real departure for me because I don't do YA. Right. But it's not a thing. It's not okay. a specialty. Okay. But I read one recently and I like it so much, I'm actually going to bring it up. But okay. On the kids' side of things, it is, you know, we, we were talking, you and I, before this about books that scared us as kids. Right. Um, and it's funny because the one that I'm beginning with is a book that seriously did scare me as a kid. I never had any nightmares because of it, but the whole lure was the horror of it. And right. I think many people agree that this is, without a doubt, continues to be the scariest book for kids out there. And that I am, of course, referring <laughs> um, to the classic Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, um, both one, two, and three. This is just number one right here. Um, they're written by Alvin Schwartz, who has other scary books that are not scary at all. This series was, and it wasn't because of his stories, because basically this collection was just um, glorified urban legends. Um, right, right. You know, every urban legend you can possibly think of. What made this scary was the fact that Stephen Gamble did the illustrations. Um, he... You know, the poor man is now only remembered for this to a certain extent. <laughs> a fact that, you know, he's a Caldecott winner. Um, I don't believe he's pleased with that fact, but I don't know what else he expected because when you do pictures, pictures like this. Seriously. But Monster just... Mama, Monster Mama was one of my favorite books and he did Monster oh, Mama. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it, again, it had sort of like the, the, the messy. Ser like... It was an, a cuter version of that. <laughs> <Really>. <laughs> it would not be hard to be a cuter version. An actual right. corpse would be a cuter version of this. <laughs> yeah. um, now, of course, they re-released these um, not that long ago with a different illustrator. In fact, you can't buy these new anymore. Wow. Um, they are not available. I don't know if that's because of him, because he got so sick of everybody only remembering him for these. But now oh. they're illustrated by Brett Helquist. Really? And how horrible to be remembered so vividly. Oh, gee. I, I know. Yeah. Poor baby. <laughs> yeah, right. I cry for him. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. And, you know, Brett Helquist, nice fellow, great artist for the series of unfortunate events, the least scary person to do those illustrations. You could, I mean, aside from, you know, Beatrix Potter, right, right. I can't think of anybody less scary than <laughs> Brett Helquist. He does mildly mysterious right right when you compare it to the the sheer horror horror and weirdness there yeah. were some and i wasn't able to find it but there are some in here that are just they actually have nothing to do with the story 
they're just weird. Mm -hmm. And those were even scarier because then you were like plumbing the, the, the deranged mind of something. Um, but you know, do, nowadays, do you think that they would even, do you think they publish would, this? Right. I have no idea. I think a small press might, I don't know if someone as big as Harper Collins, cause that's who the publisher is, right. would go for it. I Everything's do know. so PC now. Yeah, I do know that we, we bought plenty of these for my system, so at least they'll circulate for another you know decade or so. It's really amazing how PC everything is. Okay, here we are, Halloween. So I am going to bring this up, even though it almost has nothing to do with... Uh, you do that then. But it, I am going to do this. So right. so Carrie, the movie Carrie was just remade, right? Yes. Okay, speaking of PC, I saw the original. I had never seen the original before, mm -hmm. and I had never read the book. And we, some friends and I said, oh, let's watch the original. We turn on the original, and I don't know if you've ever seen it or if you remember, but that it starts out, it's, of course, high school girls. She's in it, the shower, right? Not only is she in the shower, but she's in the locker room, girls' locker room. These are teenage girls, full frontal nudity. Full, oh, really? <laughs> full frontal, all not only frontal, backal <laughs> nudity, full nudity, all everything. Young, nubile, young girl. I mean, never in a million years would that happen now. No, no way. Yeah, they'd all be played by 29-year-olds anyway. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, these were kids. And they are completely... I, I was like, what? What? I like, couldn't... So right there, you're shocked I was, already. I was shocked. <laughs> and these, you hello. Right, yeah. I was completely... I was I was dumbfounded. I was completely... I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And it... And it and I, I I couldn't believe it. I was like, really? Was it that like that loose in the seventies? It was like that crazy. <laughs> I couldn't it believe it. So yeah. and so it, it was surprising to me. I mean, I'm sure that the new Carrie isn't like that, but I suspect there is not. probably a hundred percent less nudity. Right, a hundred percent. Right. I haven't even seen. It. I haven't even read a review. Everything's it, so much more conservative now. now. Right, and so no therefore, way. at the by the same token, same thing with scaring kids. And I'm sure that they would never have scary pictures. And there you go. This Stephen Gamble kind of thing, not going to happen. Uh, I, well, boy, you, Stephen Gamble's the kind of guy who comes around once in a lifetime anyway. I mean, if you can find someone to compare, yeah. he's so influential, but you'd have to look outside the children's literature realm just right. for anybody who can even... It's like if they... Yeah, it's like if they like... It, what's his name? Damien Hurst? Is that the name of the artist? No. And what's his name? Anyway, uh, if you got one of those like really like out there artists and had to do a children's book, you know, maybe you begin to touch on what right. this book did. But well, what's yeah. one of the things that you and I were speaking about right before we got on? I said, "Oh, wait, we got to save it for the podcast." Was the book that terrified me as a child? Which <laughs> and now I me. yeah, I'm gonna. I said, "Wait, wait, we have to wait." Now this is and if, if you're listening to this, oh, and look the <laughs> oh, it won't be. <laughs> it's showing over the. Uh, I have to. Uh, I have to turn off my Google special effects. Um, All right, I because I have to show the the title of the book. Okay, it is "The Magic Finger" by Roald Dahl, who to this day is my favorite author. I Charlie and Chalk Factory. This is nothing like it. Now, to, the second page in. Well, that's a pretty terrifying book in its own. Seriously, way, right? But I was very happy to have bad children get their due because I was a teased yeah. child, and I was very happy to see people justice. To come to the bad children. Now, um, this this is the second page in. A child gleefully dancing with a shotgun. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> so that was pretty intense. That was shocking to me because I did not... I grew up in the suburbs of New York, so this was not... And New York City, so... And, the, you know, these people with a dead deer. I mean, that was, that was horrifying to me. And a kid, another kid with a rifle... And the father. But this is what really scared me. First, you had this teacher who looked like a cat. Okay. She looked like a cat. Mm -hmm. And then you turn the page and what they, there was a little instruction on, on the page. It said, hold up to the light. So when you held it up to the light, the head, oh. the head of the cat, you could see through it and you saw oh. the teacher the girl has a magic finger and she could turn the teacher into this cat. And okay. I tell this you, if you're an awesome book ever, it is such a cool book. Only it's terrifying did too. They redo this? I love Quentin Blake, but why did they redo this? This is a really good edition. Shoot, it's a really cool edition. And, and it is, 
uh, at you know, it's William Penne Dubois, as we discussed. Yeah. You know, not usually a scary illustrator, but not- what she does, it's really more of. A, I mean, look at this. I, you can't. You can, I keep hitting the mic. I'm sorry. If you're just listening to this, I highly advise you to also watch the video of this. It's a video podcast this time, but. Check this out. This girl is so mean and horrible. She turns these these hunters into half bird, half people because she doesn't like how they're shooting the birds. So they wind up as these little birds and they fly away. And the ducks that they've been shooting, they they come into the house and start living in the house and they become gigantic duck people only they just have the arms and the people just have the wings and it switches and they have to find they have to make a nest by putting you know giant sticks in their teeth and then here's the scary thing look at this here's the duck loading the shotgun (laughs) (laughs) and and the little baby duck is playing with the trains and then you have the ducks looking through the viewfinder uh, of the gun. I mean, it's really violent. You want to talk again about not, not PC? This is actually, I don't know if you're familiar. Are you familiar with Shocket and Peter or Struvel Pater? Uh, the German nursery rhymes with the scissor man who come, who'll cut off your thumbs if you're sucking your thumb. Little suck of thumb gets his... Oh thing. my gosh, that would have been me because I sucked my thumb. Hunter, and in fact, the hunter, it's... It's a rabbit in that case, but the, the rabbit gets the gun and starts oh, hunting. Gosh. You and arms is so much creepier. Uh, oh, my gosh. No. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's... Know, Peter's great. It's like, uh, if you play with matches, you might uh, burn yourself to death like this little girl, and then your cats will cry. That's a wow. Bad. Well, you know, l- listen, they all of the, all of, you know, the, all of the, the really scary, scary nursery rhymes, and there are a lot of very scary things that, we grew up with well not actually not even we didn't grow up with you know back in the day the little match girl and the oh, that I hate the little match that girl. scared me that's why i loved breadcrumbs because she got saved it's so well maybe i like breadcrumbs because it acknowledged the fact that hans christian anderson was a strange <laughs> well, weird stories he made yeah. that man yeah. Very okay, weird. so now to your next one. Tell me your next All one. All right, my next one. This is what's coming out this year. It's a picture book. Uh, it's called, uh, ooh, uh, oh, look at the reflection. Yes, you can. It's called yeah. Old Clip Clop. It's by uh, Patricia McKissick. Um, and it actually, what it looks like, and rightfully so, is it looks like it's a version of Ichabod Crane because you got this guy in a tri cornered hat going for his life on a horsey. Not the case. Um, story of a nasty fellow who... He's a landlord, and he's cheating a, a poor widow woman out of her out of her landlord, you know, her pay. Those landlords, those rotten landlords. Yeah. Landlords just don't come off too well in <laughs> children's books. There's very few nice landlords in children's books. <clears throat> and uh, so he keeps he keeps hearing sort of this bizarre kind of clip clop clip clop sound, and he's not sure what it is. And then he cheats the woman out of her out of her money um, by being a nasty soul. And then on his way home, the clip clop clip clop. He's distinctly getting louder, and he's hearing laughter, and he's going as fast as he humanly can just to get away from it. And then, and of course, he gets home. You got to show this more and, slowly, Betsy. Oh, I'm Let sorry. Let me see that again. That, that's awesome. That's him. That's him going hell for leather wow. uh, as fast as he can, and, and it's, the, the the tension is rising, and it's getting faster and faster, and it's clipping, clipping, clipping. A few more feet, he'll be home, and then you turn the page, and oh, he made it, and there he is. There he is, and he's safe, and he's at home. Everything seems to be just ducky. <laughs> and uh, and it's strange because he's never heard from again, and nobody knows why. Um, but it may have something to do with the fact that old Clip Clop uh, swallowed <gasps> him. Oh, whole. my gosh. That's scary. Horribly scary image at the end of a book. I adore this. That is going to scare the crap out of kids. Oh I know. Like, until then, it's all been, it's all been tri-cornered hat, yay, colonial. But that's, America, that you know, picture is so and scary. And then it just ends with this. That's awesome. I know. So Their when you kids say that, you wouldn't do Stephen Gamble, I'm not so sure. They've got right. a living skeleton eating a man alive in his own bed. That's pretty good. That's awesome. There are yeah. some kids who are going to love that. Oh, yes. 
No, I have these kids who would come up to me and be like, I want a scary book. Yeah. And I give them, you know, scary stories to tell in the dark, but then they get bored and they want yeah. some other things because they've read them all already. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. great. Yay. Okay. Um, and it's funny. I, I, I might as well bring this one up. Oh, it's actually not McKissick. Okay, I misremembered this. I thought Patricia McKissick had done a different scary book before. In fact, it was Virginia Hamilton. My bad. If you want. <laughs> this was an older one, but it's well worth remembering. Uh, this was called We Winnie Witches Skinny. And I don't know if you can see, but there is a skinless witch uh, riding a man who has been harnessed beneath her. Uh, oh, really- yeah, kind of. And, yeah, so this is your, first of all, that's just that's just awesome. Um, Barry Moser did the art on this. Oh, and yeah. Barry Moser he's has amazing. his own. Wonderfully. He's got some chops. He's got some chops. <laughs> And uh, no, the nice thing about this is it's your it's your rare um, African American scary story because you don't get a ton of those. Um, it's got some good. That's cat. That's a freaky cat. Um, things once in a while. And then you've got the fact that there's this horrible witch woman who will occasionally uh, take off her skin and then Ooh. ride uh, grown men like horses through the night. Is there and a reason they, for that? <laughs> just that's her thing. It's what you do. Um, and it's just it's just terrifying. I, I, I don't know. It's a classic folktale. Um, and even telling it would sound weird. But when you actually have to see the skin itself coming off, oh. that's just, you know. This it's is, a little this Walking is, Dead yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, in terms of good old-fashioned scares, wow. very, very fond of that one. Yeah. Now, a little more recent... Um, now, this was actually a sequel to a National Book Award winner mm-hmm. uh, last year, but um, there was a book called Goblin Secrets that won in the youth category for mm-hmm. the National Book Award, and that was fairly somewhat scary. It had um, it had more of a Baba Yaga clock. It was like Clockwork Baba Yaga, mm-hmm. uh, like else, which sounds good right when I say it. Yes, it is very good. Yeah, it was like world building. It was good. Uh-huh. This one, uh, it was a sequel. And it was a little more on the scare side. First of all, you can sort of see the the hands, which uh-huh. I believe was just like it's hard to tell from the cover, but it's actually the bones of dead men uh, that have been gathered together to to grab her. Ghoulish saw. Got a girl uh, who she <laughs> she loses her shadow um, after she plays a, a a pipe made out of a bone, and unfortunately, in her world, if you don't have a shadow, your parents and everybody you know is going just to consider you dead. Um, so they have a big funeral for her, and she's like, I'm right here. You know, they're not paying any attention to her. And she comes to understand that she has to get her shadow back in some way. In fact, the shadow, well, the shadow's there. It just is unattached, and it wants to be reattached. And they've got to find a way to do that. But along the way, there's a whole lot of bones, just tons and tons and tons of bones. Wait, that are, you're holding, what's it called? It's called uh, Ghoulish Song Okay. by William Alexander. And uh, it's really fun. And you don't have to have read the previous book, uh, Goblin Secrets, which won the, the National Book Award. This is wow. very, very good as well. Um, it's in the same world. And there is even a little overlap, I think. Yeah, there is overlap between some of the characters, but cool. it's mild. Cool. Yeah. So this is a good one, too. And then a classic from, okay, so we talked about, I, I had to bring some for my own use. Uh-huh. Um, you have that's to. That's how it goes, yeah. It's the law. So, I figured um, one of the way I'd have to go would be this, and many people will sort of understand this, um, would be the good old-fashioned uh, Wait Till Helen Comes. Oh, this, that's... Uh, by Mary Downing Han, Han. Yeah, this was the scary book when I was a kiddo. Um, it was not this cover. This cover is so much more effective. There we go. Than, than when I was a kid. When I was a kid, um, you know, it, it had this... <laughs> Very 80s, big sister kind of reaching out for a little sister, uh, kind of, you know, ghostly. Yes. It was it was one of those, like, Apple paperbacks. I don't yeah, remember yeah. the kind of those. And it was the best of the ghostly Apple paperbacks. This, um, it, and it certainly has staying power, obviously, because it's still around. She did the dollhouse murders. No, she didn't. She didn't do the dollhouse murders. That was right. But she did some other, like, the, the doll in the garden. That was it. She okay. did the doll in the garden. She did... That's a scary cover. 
She's still making them, too. She's still cranking them out. She's still making scary books for kids, so well played there. <laughs> but then they brought back her older stuff, and probably because this is um, the classic. Did you ever see the live-action Disney film Watcher in the Woods? No. This is the most terrifying film you will ever see um, because it's supposed to be Disney, and it was from the 70s. And God, it was like Betty Davis's last film or something horrible like that. Poor woman. Um, <laughs> and, oh, I really feel bad for her. And it was just a story about these kids moving to a home, and like I think the younger girl like starts acting kind of possessed, um, which is very similar to Wait Till Helen Comes. Wow. It was worse because they kept seeing this blindfolded girl in reflections going. <laughs> Um, and they go into a fun house at one point, and she's in all the mirrors saying, help me. And it uh, turns out she was, like, trapped years ago during a, not like a seance or something, and has been trapped in these reflected surfaces ever since. And It's so boring terrifying. when that happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, Nothing just to do. Just the most terrifying film of all time. Wow. Uh, and so this pairs very well uh, with Watcher in the Woods, should you wish to have a, a movie slash book night, uh, <laughs> or you, you're, you've got a kid who wants to do a scary sleepover night, right. this would be Make a them read night. and watch a movie. You can read, watch a movie. Great. Don't rent the birds. We did that when I was a kid. We were like, this would be totally scary. And we rented Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Uh, not an effective film for 12-year-old girls to watch yeah. and think that it's going to be scary. Didn't, yeah. really, didn't really do the job. Yeah. yeah. Not so much. No. And then also when it's black and white nowadays, you know, my, my kids. Well, that's in color. Birds is in color. Oh, is it? Is it? Yeah, barely. But uh, yeah. It's, it's in color. Well, then my kids call them blurry movies. <laughs> <laughs> blurry movies. They're called. It was kind of a blurry movie. Yeah. yeah. A blurry yeah. movie. Now this one is brand new. <laughs> You can just see that that, this, that, that, that cover just pops. Zombie baseball cover. beat down. This is the zombie head as baseball. For those yeah, of you listening, not seeing. This is Yes, aw- this is awesome. zombie baseball beat down. It is by, oh boy, I can't actually, he's a National Book Award finalist. He does yes. a lot of one game. I can't pronounce it. I know, I've got to see, see, let me see the name again because I can see, I think, it's, it's Paolo Bacigalupi. Wait, I had it, I had it. Bacigalupi. Bacha, I used to know how to say his name. Okay. Ba- Bacha Galupi. He doesn't tend to do that much. This is his first children's book. He was always doing YA before. So I know, but I think it's ba- Paolo Bacha Galupi. I think I did it. And I've I'm, mangled many a name on this show. No, no, no. I'm going with that. That sounds good. <laughs> and yeah, so this is, um, this is actually a really scary zombie book. Um, it is? With that cover? The cover it does is. not. It looks goofy, doesn't it? Yeah. But, it, it is goofy. There's a lot of poop. Um, more than there should be in a zombie book. Uh, it's cow poop, but it's still poop. Mm-hmm. And it's about, I'm just going to say about 40% zombies, 60% the problem with our current uh, immigration situation and so many <laughs> people are being forced to, to leave America after they've wow. come here. <coughs> Sorry about that. So that's a, lot of, that's a big part of the book, um, which you wouldn't really get from the cover. No. Not so much, um, but yeah, it's about a boy and his two other friends. Um, his mom's out of the country, and that's when the zombie apocalypse happens, and it happens through hamburgers. Oh, I hate like, that when that like, happens. Yeah. Um, fortunately, he's he's vegetarian, so he's not affected. But um, Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, wow. He's an, hmm. and he's seen the zombie cows. He's got these zombie cows, and zombie cows make zombie burgers. Um, well, that, you know, as you would think they would, but you know, his his horrible baseball coach becomes a zombie at one point and attempts to eat them. And that, it actually has some really scary, like we're walking through a cornfield and a zombie jumps out and gets us kind of like moments. So I, I love zombies. So you know, oh, we might have lost Betsy. Well, let's okay. All right, good. Back again. All Sunspot. right, spot. <laughs> yeah, the zombies. Zombies. So should, zombies. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so go ahead. Okay. Next. So next up, this one's not that old. It's not that new, but it's important because they're about to make a movie about it. Um, and the movie is coming out. I think it's coming out next year, but it's coming out very, very soon. Um, so this is like when the kids ask for the scary book, uh, and they're in the nine to twelve year old range. Mm-hmm. Um, this was my one number one go to. This is the Last Apprentice, Revenge of the Witch. It was by Joseph Delaney. And it was, it's terrifying. It's truly terrifying while still being 
like kid appropriate. So it's not like gory. Mm. It has the single scariest kid has to spend a night in a haunted house sequence I've ever read. And it's very clever. They usually, and they don't on the paperback, but they usually have a thing on it that says like, whatever you do, don't turn to page 48 or whatever. <laughs> and then you instantly, of course, every kid does. Again, this was a case of the pictures being sl- pretty scary in and of themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, but they certainly are matched uh, word for word with the text itself. Um, it's about a boy. He's the seventh son of a seventh son. So that's why he can hear ghosts. He's mm. apprenticed to uh, a spook. Uh, spooks are basically like exterminators for ghosts, but nobody likes them because they think ghosts hang around them. But it turns out it's a pretty good gig if you can live long enough to do it. Uh, and there's problem. You know, it's not just ghosts. It's like mm. witches and other things like that. Witches, unfortunately, can't be killed. All you can do is sort of like make little pits in your backyard and then trap them in there. Mm, uh, that's which a problem. They've done, mm. and then the boy accidentally sets one free. Uh, that's whoopsie. a bigger problem. <laughs> so it's actually a pretty good um, witch story on top of everything else. You'll actually be scared of witches with this book, which you cannot usually say about books. Um, but this one is really good, so I gotta wow. recommend it. Wow. That's excellent. Okay. Well, you know, you know that what well, you just reminded me. Um, remember the. What was the Stephen King one about um about vampires? Uh was it it wasn't Lost Boys, was it? That was a movie. No, I don't think that was him. Yeah. What was the one? There was some Stephen King book about vampires. All I remember is my brother in 10th grade nailing literally nailing his window shut. <laughs> Tenth grade boy nailing his window shut. Oh, that was classic. That's effective. Yeah. That's Did, good. Kept all the vampires out anyway. We didn't For have sure. any in our house. Was he eaten by vampires? He's, no. No. Well then. There. There what you go. Right. Smart kid. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> it really works. Yeah. Yep. So we have just two more at this point. Okay. This next one is brand spanking new. So new, in fact, that I just got it from the library. And I'm actually still in the middle of reading it, but it's really good. So um, this is The Lost Boy. Um, oh, how weird five- that I just said that, and I didn't know you were pulling that up. Bizarre. Do, 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 do. <laughs> exactly. This is by Greg Ruth. It's a graphic novel. Okay. Um, so if you are afraid of walking, talking, creepy dolls... Um, like if, if Toy Story 3 freaked <laughs> you out with that baby doll character, uh, boy, is this the book for you. <laughs> walking homunculuses are abundant. And this is about a boy. He, he moves to a house. Um, he finds under a loose floorboard pretty much instantly in his bedroom an old reel-to-reel tape recorder um, from about 1960. And he starts playing it, and it's this boy, Walter Pigeon, who... <laughs> Turns out he disappeared. Um, he was like a 10-year-old boy, and he disappeared from this town. The boy starts listening to the tapes. The tapes make it clear that the boy sort of was finding these mysterious goings-on in his town that didn't seem to make sense. Um, he was warned off of figuring out what they were. Now he's disappeared for lots of years. People just thought he ran away because his dad wasn't so great. Um, but now the, our current boy hero and uh, a girl who's from the town who actually knows what's going on sort of team up to kind of find him. Um, but meanwhile, there's a really good big bad scary guy um, and he threatens them at one point and it's a wonderful scary shot if I can find it. There we go. So he's got this uh, this guy in his bedroom. Oh wow. Point. It's really, they're in your bedroom. That It doesn't get any better That's than that. not good. That's just... That's your safe space, and uh, wow. you don't want to get eaten or. Oh, no, you don't want the. You don't want the. Yeah, so that's fun. Um, yes, so this is. I'm not done with. I I do know the twist, unfortunately, because I skipped to the end and I saw. Betsy, the twist. I can't believe I you did I didn't that. Do that. It was just sort of like flipping, and then I happened to read something. I'm like, oh. And now, now the book is totally ruined for me. I'm like, well, now I know. I twist. cannot. I am really shocked. I, I, I you just you, almost never happens. Almost never. Almost happens. never. It was a graphic novel. It was just. I was just. I was just flipping. I was like, oh, that looks like an interesting. <sighs> oh. oh, that's a shame. Oh, yeah. Well. Sorry, Greg. <laughs> um, all right, and now my final book. 
is actually not, it's YA. So there's two weirdnesses about this. It's YA, number mm-hmm. one. And number two, it's not coming out till February of next year. Okay. Uh, that's right. But we're going to uh, talk about it anyway. We're going to talk about it anyway, because we can. Ha <laughs> ha. This is The Well's End. It's by Seth Fishman, who is actually an agent. This is his first YA novel. He's a very good writer. Who knew? Uh, um, and this is, it takes place in a little private school. And there's a girl there. She Private was, uh, school stories. No, no, no. That's scary. Where they, have to, where they get to live. It's sort of boarding school, even, like, because they, they live away. Yeah. Though her dad lives in town, so it's not that much of a distance. But um, still, yeah, so she's she a part. School, and she, she, she was kind of notable. Because- wait, now I lost your, wait, I lost your audio. What happened to your audio? I don't know. Oh, there we go. Full okay. moon. Okay, go ahead. Um, in any case, when this girl was a baby, um, she was dropped. She she was dropped. She fell down a well. Um, so she's sort of known as Baby Mia, who fell down a well, and that's right. of course followed her all her entire life. So she's seventeen now, and she is uh, going to school, and she meets a cute boy, and it's nice. And then people start getting sick, and the way in which they get sick is they just aid. Wait, wait, wait! What? Wait. Oh, the audio cut out again. Wait, wait, wait. How, wait, how did they get sick? You got cut they get, off. They get old. They get old. Their body, like, accelerates the aging process. <gasps> That's horrible. And so it's a virus. Yeah, so there's this virus that, like, and so it's a problem if it's your dad because he's going to die, like, almost all, like, right away. Um, and so all the faculty are just, you know, out. And then it starts hitting the kids. And meanwhile, there's, like, this quarantine on the school. They don't know what's going on. So our heroine and four of her friends sort of escape, and it's a harrowing, harrowing escape. And she's escaping to her dad, who some, this has something to do with her dad in some way, and she doesn't uh-huh. know what it is because he's apparently he just works for an electronics firm. Um, fun fact: he doesn't work for an electronics <gasps> firm, and uh, then she sort of discovers what her dad really does, and it gets really weird. Uh. It doesn't go in the direction you expect it to go. Um, okay, you can't but, ruin it. You can't tell. I will not ruin it's not it, out it, yet. It is. There's a reason that the you know. And, oh, that's right. There's all these soldiers around, but it seems even though they're wearing these hazmat suits, they're getting it too. And oh, gonna get it next, or is one of her friends gonna get it? It's 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 good. It's a good scary. Neat. You know, I like it. Claustrophobic. You know, it's okay. good. Uh, it's kind of a little you know Walking Deadish. Uh, you know, people are getting yeah. the flu now, and it's the the zombie flu. Well, cough, cough. Uh oh. Yeah. Yeah. You look really mature right now. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a really good book to read if you are above the age of thirty because it really like stresses how awesome people look once they're past the age of thirty. <laughs> it's like these people look amazingly mature. It's like, thank you. <laughs> Why now you can go into a bar and drink? Oh, too bad you're dead. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Yeah, well, that, that actually does come up. One of the characters is like, well, now I can drink. <laughs> That's yeah. really funny. Well, of course, the teenagers would think that, right? Absolutely. It's the first thing that would come to mind. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's yeah. great, Betsy. Really good good roundup of scary books for Halloween. I think I, I'm going to have to put this out before Halloween, since Halloween, if I save this for the Halloween episode, people would only have a day to listen. So I think it's going to have to come out a week before so that people have a chance to... Catch up on it's there. Only fair. Scary. That's right. It is only fair. And a lot fair. of these are in your library, and uh, with the exception, of course, of the Wells End, that'll be coming out next year. Right. Yeah. You'll just have to wait and be tortured to, you know, have yep. to suffer. Big old thing. That's yeah. what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's really great. You know, when I have, I was thinking about YAs when you were talking about scary books, and all of a sudden, all these books started coming to mind, like. Uh, Whatever happened to Cass McBride? So mm-hmm. good. Girl gets buried. Mm-hmm. All right, Gail Giles. Gail Giles is really good at that Gail stuff. Gail Giles is really good. Really good. And she has a new book coming out. I just got the um, a catalog. Whose was it? Who? What, whose was it? Uh, oh, shoot. She's got a new book coming out. It's not. A, I don't think it's a scary book. But anyway, Cass McBride, great if you want something scary. Oh, um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, what's another one? Walking Dead Girl. That's a really scary yeah. book. Yeah, that's um, a good one. And what about oh the is it the harrowing, it the Halloween the Halloween, the Halloween the Halloween I, so. I have it yeah. over there. What is it? It's about an Amish uh, Amish girl and zombies. No vampires, 
It's okay. Really? Zombies in a bit? Is that really what you're going to write about? And I was, I was like, what the heck? And then it got, it was really good. I liked it. I really yeah. liked it because I really I I was always fascinated by the Amish, and then it was it was basically your you know end of the world kind of thing, and the Amish were going to be saved because they were so good, and all the all the all the places in the parts of the world that weren't depraved, you know, pretty much saved, and um, that's what I always figured when yeah. the world ends that I'm just going to go to an Amish community, and that's, that's where I'll, yeah, yeah, that was my plan when yeah. I was like twelve, yeah. Oh, like, well, my plan. Me, <laughs> I always figured, you know, I, I, I don't know how I saw Frankenstein, the original, you know, the black and white Frankenstein yeah. movie, but I saw it when I was little, and I remember thinking, literally as a four-year-old, how I'm going to escape when Frankenstein comes to get me was I was going to run fast because Frankenstein never moves very quickly. People just back away slowly. They back away slowly and then they get killed. So all you have to do is run fast. The other thing, my second, my plan B was I would hide under my mother's bureau, which she still owns. And when I look at it, there's about I don't know, six inches of space. So yeah, I must yeah. have been really little when I thought this plan yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, that was, that. those are my... Okay, the plan just doesn't pan out now. Yeah. No, but the running fast was good. Running yeah, fa- well, fast you can still good. do that now when yeah. you meet Frankenstein, so right. it's still a good plan. Yeah. Phase I'm not as fast as I was, though. <laughs> Faster than Frankenstein. Probably, yeah. 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 I do, I do recall that. I mean, yeah. I, you know, all the scary things just coming up, bubbling up. You know, yeah. the babysitter who like a therapeutic tried, session. Yeah. yeah, seriously, fears. You know, the babysitter who scared the living bahoogies out of me when she, I begged to stay up late to watch a scary movie, and in the you know those no there were no VCRs. It was like the Mummy, like something really, and I was really scared. I got in bed. And we had this one of these really realistic rubber masks of the mummy. Okay, she comes in to my room in the dark, uh, wearing the mask. And she she comes in. I was just about to fall asleep. I scream bloody murder. I was hysterical. I don't know. I was maybe ten years old. Oh my gosh! I I mean. Who does that to a child? <laughs> she, she ever do that? She ever babysit for you again? <laughs> oh no way! I was so angry. And guess what? Her mom was the French teacher, and I took French for six years. It was ugly. <laughs> yeah, it was a tough one. But yeah, she. I. Oh my god! I was so angry at her. I was so angry. And uh, you know those kinds of things, begging the babysitters to let you stay up late, and then paying for it <laughs> not, yeah not well, there's, a good, there's a good uh this american life where they, they talk about babysitters and, i uh, love that one the one where yeah. the, the guy would like convince his little brothers he was a werewolf yes yeah. that was yeah. yeah that was fantastic yeah yeah that's such a great show oh betsy bird uh you know i gotta ask you the question at the end of the show if you All right, go for it. if you could go to the yard sale of any character in the history of children's literature whose would you go to and what would you buy and i think that we have to make it thematic and it has to be something scary oh i know i, I didn't warn you i didn't warn and you. i never had the answers for this all right the mat- so it's gotta be scary uh, don't you think it should be a scary thing I guess so, but it makes it that much more difficult. It does, and I didn't warn you at all. I just realized I had to ask you. Okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Oh, you're good. You're very good. All right. So it would be the yard sale of one of the witches from the witches. Ooh. And I would buy one of those lovely wigs. (laughs) Just in case. And make them look like Angelica Houston. Oh, very good. That would be my uh, that would be my thing. That would or be b- that would be very scary, actually. <laughs> it would be, it would, be dark scary. it would be very Halloween. Just to have yes, a true, so true. And then yeah. the next time we do this, you could wear it, and you'd have more than just those tights around your neck. <laughs> exactly. These are very elegant tights. Thank you very much. Yes, I have to yeah. say, anybody listening to this, they'll be like, "What tights around her neck? What is she talking about?" But yeah, they're, they're incredibly jaunty. Yes, jaunty is the word. Much with the jauntiness. Fabulous. Yeah. Thank you so much. I thank you. really appreciate it, and it was an excellent roundup. Well, thank you so much. All right, I think we have to have All you right. back on for maybe the holiday roundup. 
Oh. Sounds like a plan. Okay. All See right. you next time. You too. Bye.